In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Jay Emerson asks us, is it really possible to learn to speed read? And if it is, what are the best methods? 95% of college educated individuals read at a rate of between 200 and 400 words per minute, according to extensive research done by the University of Massachusetts Amherst professor, Dr. Keith Rayner. However, there exists a small but rather vocal subset of people who insist they can read several times faster than this using various speed reading techniques. With very little searching, you'll also find many a company claiming that after going through their program or using their app regularly, you can read even as many as a thousand words per minute. Tim Ferriss of 4-Hour Workweek fame offers a method for increasing speed in reading for free on his website, claiming with this method you'll see an average increase in reading speed of about 386% in just three hours of practice. All right, so is any of this really possible? When it comes to reading, comprehension is everything. Reading text twice as fast as someone else isn't often very helpful if, after you're done, you don't understand or retain most of what you read. And this is where most speed reading programs break down. Studies have repeatedly shown that speed readers almost universally score significantly worse on reading comprehension tests than people who consume the text at a more normal pace. Perhaps the most famous test concerning this was conducted by one Dr. Ronald Carver, author of The Causes of High and Low Reading Achievement. Among many other studies he's done over the years looking at reading speed and comprehension, in one notable one, he painstakingly sought out the best speed readers he could find, choosing his subjects via testing a large group of college students for their speed reading and comprehension abilities, and then selecting the top scorers, selecting people whose jobs required exceptional amounts of daily reading, such as a writer from The New Yorker, and selecting a few very prominent individuals who'd built reputations on their speed reading abilities. What Carver was hoping to do here was collect the best of the best among individuals who'd previously demonstrated great aptitude for speed reading while maintaining high levels of reading comprehension. He wanted to see if they really had abilities much outside of a normal college-educated individual when testing in a scientifically rigorous fashion. It turns out that not one of these elite readers could achieve a 75% reading comprehension level, a C average, while reading above 600 words per minute. While this is to decidedly faster than an average college-educated adult, it should be emphasized again that Carver meticulously screened the candidates in his study to find the best of the best in terms of speed readers. And the best from that group could still only achieve a C average in terms of reading comprehension at a maximum of one-third faster than what is generally considered the normal ceiling of an average college-level reader. To quote the formerly mentioned Professor Keith Rayner, author of Eye Movements and Information Processing During Reading 20 Years of Research, he says, Very few people can read faster than 400 words per minute, and any gain would likely come with an unacceptable loss of comprehension. Dr. Rayner goes on to state, You can probably push yourself to get a little over 500 words per minute, but you're limited by the eyes and the anatomy of the retina. To understand text, you need to move your eyes to put the fovea, the part of your eye responsible for sharp central vision, on the part of the text you want to focus. Acuity drops off pretty markedly outside the fovea, and you can't discriminate the words and text far from the fovea. So that's the rate-limited factor, as is how fast the brain can process information. And indeed, many speed reading techniques try to focus on cutting down on eye movements that on average take about a tenth of a second for each movement or scart. These techniques claim you can reduce the number of eye movements by doing things like reading two lines at once or taking in as many words as possible before an eye movements, but as Rayner notes, the other claim is that you can take in more information per eye fixation, but there's no evidence that says we can do that. What we know about the physiology of the retina is against the notion that you can take in two lines of text at the same time. Another common speed reading method is to try and eliminate some vocalization, saying words in your head while reading. Rayner notes that working towards this end can help, but ultimately, research shows that when you do that and the text is difficult, comprehension goes to pieces. Essentially, your brain needs this time not just to to see the word, but to understand its meaning. Take away that pause while you sub-vocalize, and while you might have looked at a lot of words on the page, you're not going to understand or remember them later. Now, everyone has experienced something like this at one point or another, where they read a page, but are either thinking of something else or just spacing out. You can get to the end of the page and realize you have no clue at all what you just read, even though your eyes looked over all the words. 
Further, both Carver and Rayner found that completely eliminating subvocalization while reading isn't possible even for skimmers. This has been proven via hooking up electromagnetic sensors to the throat. It turns out that when you're saying the words in your head, your brain is also sending nerve impulses to your speech controlling muscles, whether you notice or not, which can be picked up via these electromagnetic sensors. Even the best of speed readers who claim to have eliminated subvocalization have been shown to have this happen. Your eyes can only focus on so much at one time and your brain also has processing limitations once the words start getting streamed into your brain too fast your ability to comprehend their meaning and retain anything from them sharply declines so while speed reading apps that do things like flash words at you on a single point so you can get rid of the time it takes to actually move your eyes to focus on a new point could potentially speed up your reading a bit there is still the problem of how fast your brain can actually process a word apps that use this method tend to push the upper limit and over overload your brain's ability to comprehend, while also not letting you glance back at any of the words your brain finds trickier than others. Needless to say, comprehension levels tend to be extremely poor using this speed reading method because of this. As such, one real method for increasing your abilities as a reader, not to the astounding levels claimed by many a speed reading course or app, but at least getting you to the upper part of that 200 to 400 word per minute curve, is to work on your recognition vocabulary, your ability to see a word and comprehend its meaning. You can achieve this by simply reading a lot and working at increasing your vocabulary. The increase in your reading speed by broadening your recognition vocabulary can even be measured directly via monitoring the aforementioned nerve impulse pulses to the muscles in your throat and tongue while you silently read. It has been found that when you encounter a word you're not very familiar with, you subvocalize it much slower than words your brain recognizes more readily. The other advantage to a larger recognition vocabulary is reducing the number of times your eyes have to jump back to reread a word or sentence, something that happens a lot whether you consciously register it or not. All right, so are there any legitimate speed readers as opposed to advanced skimmers out there? Well, yes, Michael Jordan's of the reading world do exist, but unfortunately for us mere mortals, their methods can't be taught. For instance, Kim Peek, a so-called mega savant or human Google who served as the inspiration for Rain Man, was one such well-known example. While Peek's mental prowess has been subjected to significant embellishments over the years, it is quite well documented that he could seemingly effortlessly absorb all the information on a given page with remarkable speed. While exactly how many words per minute he could read with almost perfect comprehension was never tested, at least that we could find documentation of, according to his father, who by necessity had to be his shadow, as Kim Peek called him, Kim generally averaged about 10 seconds a page and then could recall it all with almost perfect accuracy even years later. This was an ability Kim was more than happy to demonstrate, including performing, as it were, in front of over two and a half million people over the years in various lecture halls and libraries across the United States. After he came out of his shell a bit, after Rain Man, he'd even often walk up to strangers on the street to demonstrate his astounding memory and date processing abilities. This is one of the few ways that he was able to socially interact with others. However, his abilities were thought to be because of a serious congenital birth defect known. Okay. Siri. I found this on the web for a serious congenital birth defect. Check it out. I don't want to check it out, Siri. I'm trying to record a video. However, Peek's abilities were believed to be the side effect of a serious congenital birth defect known as a genesis of the corpus callosum, in which a large band of white matter that connects the two hemispheres of the brain doesn't develop correctly. In his case, it didn't develop at all, and his brain compensated by making some rather unusual connections, leaving him mentally and physically handicapped in many ways, while also giving him his truly remarkable memory. In the end, if you count what most think of as skimming, as speed reading, it is absolutely possible to speed read. And there certainly are techniques that can help there. For instance, a common, very simple one is to only read the first sentence of every paragraph in a book. You'll generally get the idea of the chapter without needing to read all the nitty gritty details. But if you're signing up to a course or downloading an app that claims it will teach you how to read a thousand words per minute with the same reading comprehension levels as when you read at your normal pace, you're going to be sorely disappointed by the actual results. Universally, these courses are either selling snake oil or are going to teach you advanced skimming skills learning to quickly recognize what to ignore and what to pay attention to on the fly. Now, being good at skimming can be an extremely valuable skill in some circumstances, but don't expect to get anywhere close to the level of reading comprehension that you get when you read at your normal pace. After a certain point, the faster you go, the less you'll understand or remember later.
And on that note, a common trick used by many speed reading courses to show how much their students have improved their reading speed while managing to maintain high levels of reading comprehension is to give a test where even someone who hasn't read the text at all is capable of scoring very high on the exam that's covering that text. And now for some bonus facts. While audiobooks and podcasts such as are exceptionally entertaining and enlightening, if I might say so myself, Brain Food Show podcast, which you should subscribe to right now, Go ahead, I'll wait. Can be very enjoyable to listen to. It turns out it's a slow way of getting information compared to reading. You see, even the fastest of speakers can typically only get up to about 250 words per minute, which ends up sounding a bit like auctioneer talk. It turns out most people's brains are capable of comprehending speech as high as about 300 words per minute, tested via speeding up recorded audio, or about the same as we can comfortably read at. For reference, a typical audiobook reader will read at a speed of about 150 to 175 words per minute. And now for another bonus fact. Preliminary studies done by one Anne Mangan of Stavanger University in Norway have shown that reading comprehension is somewhat worse on electronic devices than it is with paper books. Exactly why this is the case isn't clear, but on that note, you should consider buying our printed book, The Wise Book of Wise, available on Amazon, link below. And now for another bonus fact. Finally, you may have heard that reading in a dimly lit area will damage your eyesight. However, studies to date do not support this notion. The only issue for reading in dim lighting is that it can cause extra eye strain, which will go away simply by resting your eyes. That said, it should be noted that for people who read a lot or otherwise focus on things close up for long periods of time, such as people who work on computers all day or do a lot of sewing or things like that, they do have a higher tendency to develop myopia. That's nearsightedness, but dim lighting doesn't appear to make this tendency worse. It's simply that excessive reading seems to contribute to eventually developing nearsightedness. Why this is the case isn't yet fully understood, but the correlation is strong enough between groups of people who do a lot of close eye work and their propensity to develop myopia at a drastically higher rate than average that most optometrists are prepared to say that close eye work is for some a major contributing factor to developing myopia. The leading theory as to the cause, which seems plausible enough, is that the near constant straining of muscles focusing the eye, stretching the eyeball abyss over the years, gradually causes a permanent lengthening of the eyeball, thus the person developing myopia as they age. Whether reading in low light or ample light for lengthy time frames, the resulting eye strain is not serious and one simply needs to rest the eyes on occasion. You can do so by periodically taking a break from focusing on something close up and instead looking at something far away. Specifically, as a general rule, optometrists tend to recommend taking a break from focusing your eyes on close up things for a minute or two every 15 to 30 minutes. Also, closing your eyes for a minute helps because while reading, you typically blink about one quarter of the amount you would normally do, so your eyes can get a bit dry trying to. Train yourself to blink regularly while concentrating isn't usually feasible, so the eye closing method tends to work for most people. So, I really hope you found that video interesting. Hopefully, we answered that question for you. If you did like it, you know what to do smash that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.